Chapter 1. Getting Started 1.1. The Game Pathfinder is a role-playing game, RPG, that is played with a group of at least four people, but no more than seven. That's a Game Master, GM, and between four and six players. The larger the table, the more characters you have, and usually the longer the game will take. There are two ways to play Pathfinder. At home, using the rule books and adventures you've written up yourself, this is called homebrew, or at a gaming club, usually through the organization run by Pathfinder's publisher, Paizo, called Pathfinder Society, PFS. There's a lot of lingo in these games, but you'll catch on quickly if you take it from the top. Okay, great, you say. I know how many people are involved, but what is a role-playing game anyway? The concept of a role-playing game is that you create a character and pretend to be that person as he or she goes on an adventure in a world where magic is everywhere and monsters are real. When you speak, you're speaking the words your character would say. You move by choosing actions your character would make in response to situations you encounter. You can be big, small, human, male, female, strong, weak, smart, dumb, gorgeous, or really, really ugly. I once played a dwarf who was so ugly, he literally used his face as a weapon. This is the perfect game for frustrated actors, storytellers, and people who want to take a break from the real world and be someone else for a while. There are rule books that tell you what you can legally do in the game, books that describe the monsters you might encounter, including their weaknesses, which is mighty handy to know, and either scenarios or adventure paths that give you the framework of the story you're telling together. The Game Master... GM, is the person who'll be trying to herd your particular group of cats. He or she will have the plot outline, the details of what happens next, and the statistics by which the bad guys and your allies operate. In a lot of ways, the GM is the narrator of your common story. In Pathfinder Society, each story is contained within what's called a scenario or a module. These stories take between two and six hours to complete. In home play, there are Pathfinder Adventure Paths, where the plot takes six books to tell, and you and your friends will be pursuing the story for weeks, if not months. There's also another kind of home play that is open-ended, where the story will morph and change in accordance with what your group, the party, chooses to do. The day you get together to play, you all sit down at a table, or on a floor, or on couches, but it's usually a table in someone's dining room or at a game store. The GM gives you the opening teaser about what the scenario is about, the blurb. You'll have time to introduce your characters to each other, and then the GM will start reading the narration for the game. This is called box text because it's presented in print as text in a specially shaded or otherwise set-apart box to show that it's special. It's presented in one lump, like when a parent reads a story to a kid at story time, but it's usually not very long. It's just long enough to set the scene. You can't get away from listening to the opening narration, by the way. You need to pay attention to this part, because it's usually where you're given the objectives that the party will be trying to achieve through the course of your play. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before you ever sit down to play, you've got some work to do. 1.2. The Paperwork Everybody starts out with a blank character sheet. This is a form where you write down the attributes of your character, their skills, and their equipment. It's like a crib sheet for your character. It looks pretty limiting on first blush, a lot of boxes and numbers, but this is the skeleton on which you build up the flesh of your persona. I'll take you through every step of writing up a character sheet as this book goes on. In Pathfinder Society, there are also adventure records, where you keep track of the experience points you've earned, the goodies that you've found or bought in the course of the game, and notes about what happened. The beauty is that these characters continue after the initial storyline is done. They're practically living, breathing individuals, going about their business in your imagination. The storyline, the scenario or adventure path, is just one day or series of days in your person's life. Each story builds on the last, and your character will get to know, like, fight with, or even love another player's character and everything you experience has an impact on the person you're playing. It really is like writing a novel, but using only spoken words. 1.3. The Materials 
So you have your character sheet. The numbers and entries will change with almost every game session, since as you gain experience, you gain abilities, and your skills will also increase. Don't ever write a character sheet in ink. Pencil is the way to go. Or if you're using a tablet or laptop, there are computer programs like Hero Lab that let you keep your character sheet digitally. I prefer the old-fashioned way, with a pencil and eraser close to hand. It seems so much more organic to me, but that could just be my inner Luddite talking. Characters are also PCs, a term you should be familiar with from online gaming. A PC is a player character, meaning a character that belongs to and is operated by a living human being. An NPC is a non-player character, and these are the folks who populate the world you move through. They're the bad guys, the guy who hires the PCs to do a job, the damsels in distress, the merchant selling lizard on a stick in the street, or the priestess you go to when you need to get patched up. Virtually every individual you encounter in your game who isn't a PC is going to be an NPC. Probably the most important thing to obtain is the rule book. Pathfinder is a pretty rules-intensive system, and there are a lot of rules to learn. Having the core rulebook at your elbow while you play is an incredible help. There are literally dozens of books and expansion materials on the market, but the only books you really need to get started are the core rulebook and Dungeon Master's Guide and the Bestiary. These are all in hardback and a little expensive to purchase, but they're worth every penny. The core rulebook has all the detailed rules you'll need to play a Pathfinder character. The Dungeon and Master's Guide has tips for running a game for other people, including options for bad guys and adversaries. The Bestiary contains descriptions of the monsters that you might encounter, from weak little things like kobolds to truly scary beasts like beholders. These three books will give you all the data and details you'll need to play a good game of Pathfinder, or at least to get started. If you don't want to buy all three books, you can always get the Beginner's Box Set, which will give you at least a part of what you'll need. You'll need a binder or at least a folder to keep your sheets together. Adventure records in Society play are numbered and used to track the ability bumps, special powers, bonus equipment, and successes and failures of your character. You need these pages with you every time you game, even in home play. It's good to keep track of the same details so you should get a notepad or notebook, too. You'll need a miniature figure to represent your character in 3D. We call these figs, and they're made by various companies who sell their wares at game stores or online. I get almost all of my figs from Reaper, but there are other manufacturers, too. If you're extremely talented and can stick to the right size, you might even be able to make your fig yourself. The figs need to be able to sit into one-inch grid spaces, this is because when you're playing the game, there will be moments of combat, and these events are tracked in real space using figs and a map. The terrain is either printed out on paper or drawn on a rubber map with erasable ink. Each one-inch square represents a five-foot square of space around your character, about the amount of space that you'd take up if you stood up right now and held your arms out to your sides. The PCs get a very literal piece of personal space measuring five feet by five feet, and you will get used to counting squares on a map to see how far your character can run in one go, or to see how far out of range these kobolds are before you start shooting your bow. It's something that helps you visualize the action when action comes, and it helps the GM to control the scene. Last but not least, you will need dice. RPGs are played with a full set of polyhedral dice. You'll need at least one of each of these. A 20-sided die, D20, a 12-sided die, D12, a 10-sided die, D10, an 8-sided die, D8, a regular 6-sided die, D6, and a 4-sided die, D4, which is shaped like a little pyramid and is worse than a Lego if you ever step on it. The majority of the rolls you'll make in Pathfinder use the D20. Keep track of your dice because the numbers they show when you roll them will tell you whether your action has just succeeded. If you've failed, and sometimes even if your character dies. Character death happens, but thankfully, unless you have a GM with a bad attitude and a penchant for making people have bad days, it happens pretty rarely. That's a very good thing, because before you're done, you're going to get attached to the PC you play. A lot of players get really superstitious about their dice. 
It's gamer etiquette to never roll someone else's dice without asking, and people train their dice by leaving them showing their highest possible roll when they're sitting idle. I've also heard of people who punish dice that consistently give bad rolls by throwing them in the freezer, or once, quite dramatically, microwaving them. I don't recommend the microwave method. I'm just as guilty. When my dice keep rolling low, I fire them and put them back into the fabric pouch I use to carry them around. I put my dice in, time out. You might think this is weird now, but just you wait. You'll find yourself complaining about these little traitors too.